Hello fellow explorers, welcome back to our channel, where we embark on captivating journeys through the world of science and exploration. Today, we have a truly fascinating experience in store for you. We'll be delving into the intricacies of marine life by dissecting a green sea turtle egg for research purposes. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you won't miss any of our incredible explorations. Before we begin, let's take a moment to appreciate the sea turtle. These guys have been around since the dinosaurs and have remained virtually unchanged for about 110 million years. There are now seven known sea turtle species around the world and they are all ancient majestic creatures that all have their special roles in maintaining the delicate balance of marine ecosystems. Today's egg comes from a green sea turtle, also known as Chelonia midas. The green sea turtles act as herbivores that play essential roles in preserving seagrass beds and coral reefs. Their feeding habits promote the growth of vital underwater habitats, ensuring a vibrant and thriving ocean for countless other marine species. Before we proceed with the egg dissection, remember that this is a failed egg. I study the causes of hatching failure in failed eggs to help conservation groups around the world come up with solutions and boost hatching success and hopefully population numbers. I primarily work with threatened species such as the green sea turtle. In the IUCN red list, they are listed as an endangered species and one of the threats they face is global warming. Many scientists, including myself, are concerned about the effects of rising temperatures seen across the world on the survival of sea turtles. For example, temperatures can become so high that development of embryos are unsuccessful. Essentially, they die in the egg at virtually almost any stage. So this is why it's really important to understand the causes of hatching failure. Being able to differentiate if eggs are failing because of embryo mortality or fertilization failure can really help conservation groups narrow down as to what is going wrong. For example, temperature. Temperature could be a cause that embryo mortality could be so high. And this is really the aim of the research that I'm doing, to understand the causes of hatching failure so we can feed them into decision making for more efficient conservation. So now that you have a very brief introduction as to what I research, we are really in the thick of this egg dissection. And we've started to see the shape of the turtle embryo that was in the egg. At this stage, we've removed several maggots, and this is because eggs are usually left underground incubating for about 60 days. That's roughly two months, and eggs are collected after incubation, once all of its little brothers and sisters have left, and we go back to these nests to kind of verify how many have hatched and how many haven't. So it's kind of astounding to see that it's still in relatively good condition despite having been underground for two months. Scientifically, I would describe this embryo as a stage 30 embryo. This is because the remaining yolk mass, which is the small thing the little hatchling or embryo is hugging in the middle, the remaining yolk mass is covered with a kind of pigmented membrane which, as you can see here, I'm peeling off, has also encapsulated the embryo in the center and also the inframarginal scutes, which is the scales that are near its belly, are folded towards the center, which you may not see it properly here as he's hiding it with the flippers, but once you move it to the side you can see it 
and the other thing is that the mass of the yolk is about less than one half of the volume of this unhatched embryo which you can clearly see here the volume of the unhatched specimen is significantly larger than the yolk that is left Another incredible thing you can see if you look really closely at the tip of its bill or beak, you can see almost like a white dot. This is the egg tooth. All turtle hatchlings have an egg tooth, which is a sharp projection right at the tip of its nose, which allows it to break through the shell. And you can actually see that quite well in this specimen. An egg tooth is temporary and that tends to go away as they grow. At this stage, it's looking like we've successfully dissected most of the surrounding area away from the embryo. We are now looking at getting it cleaned up just a little bit more before we collect this embryo. So I usually work with undeveloped eggs. So this means eggs that it looks like nothing happened in them. But occasionally I get eggs like this where there is obvious development of an embryo. And I will still keep these aside for future reference and for education like this video. Next, I'm going to prepare freezing bags so that we can preserve the specimen for future reference if we want to carry out further investigations. So some details that I would write on this bag is the place the sample was collected. So this uh, green sea turtle embryo was collected from the Daros Research Center in the Seychelles. I am currently working with eight different islands in the Seychelles and studying across three different species of threatened turtles and tortoises. As we conclude this eye-opening journey, remember that each scientific endeavor, no matter how small, brings us closer to understanding the marvels of our natural world. Thank you for joining us on this incredible expedition. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up Share it with your fellow explorers and let us know in the comments below what other captivating topics you'd like us to explore. If you enjoyed this adventure, don't miss out on our next exciting exploration. Click on the video on the screen to continue the journey. And as always, stay curious and keep exploring.